Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for Game Week 13 for the 5% series. We have a small number of players to choose from and I advise which ones are worth buying, which ones are worth selling. You still have lots of choice. You just pick any combination and hopefully you'll finish top 5% globally, which means you'll do all right in your mini league. The video is split into two sections. The first section, we look at what happened last game week and I'll try and whiz through that quickly. And then we look at the upcoming game week. And for each player, they have a different coloured background. Most of them are white. That means they're fine. If you want to keep them, buy them, sell them, doesn't matter. But there are a few other coloured backgrounds I show. But this week, because of the way the fixtures are, there just aren't many exciting fixtures. I mean, Man City and Liverpool is an exciting fixture. But from an FPL point of view, there's not a great choice. It's quite plausible there'd be no clean sheets this week. This could well be a low scoring game week and you watch that come back to bite me. Anyway, so the different colours that you may see on the backgrounds. A yellow background means it's a new player introduced into the system. Green is a good buy and I think there's only one or two this week that I'm saying that player is a good buy. Grey is bench fodder. Try to have no more than three grey players. There are no blue ones I think this week but that would mean they're sellable soon. Orange means they're sellable now and I'll try and explain what's going on with those. A red player means sell it now. Sell the player now. So the scores for game week 12. For the goalkeepers you would have played one of these goalkeepers which would have got you an average of three points. The defenders you would have let's just say you would have played two of these defenders. Those two would have averaged 8.4 between them. You may have had two of these if you're playing a 4-4-2, would have averaged 12 points. And then you may have had LaSalle, so you got zero points. Regarding the midfielders, the more expensive midfielders, they averaged 10.4 if you had two of them. The cheaper midfielders, they averaged 9.6 if you had two of these. And then there were some slightly cheaper midfielders as well, which I'm not reckoning in with these averages. The averages are just a guide for me and a bit for you to see roughly how the system is doing if you just had random players, I guess. Regarding the forwards, I'm assuming you had one of the expensive forwards, one of the cheap ones, just for the sake of looking at average score. You may have played one, you may have played three. It really doesn't matter. The expensive forwards that we have in the system, they average 6.8 points. And the cheaper forwards they average 3.1 points. And now we're looking forward to game week 13 as I look at each player individually. We we'll now look at the players in the system and as I show them to you, they're ordered in by position and then by price. So Nick Pope, as I mentioned earlier, there's a reasonable chance, I think, there'd be no clean sheets this week. Or rather, it's very hard to predict where the clean sheet's going to come. So Pope, if you needed to change your keeper, he's a perfectly good keeper still to get. At home to Chelsea, Chelsea have scored four goals in their last two games. So uh, there's a reasonable chance Newcastle aren't getting a clean sheet. Edison's currently flagged as injured and for 5.5 I'd rather have Pope than Edison anyway. So certainly don't buy Edison. If you've got him, it's fine to keep him. But if you had Edison and Turner, you're at risk of maybe not even having a keeper this week. In which case, you probably would want to move Edison on. Onana, he's not done too bad recently. He's okay to keep. As is Johnston, he's all right for another maybe three game weeks. He's fine. Uh, Flecken's at home to Arsenal. Pickford, Pickford's interesting. At home to Man United. If I had a free bet to say where's a clean sheet going to come from for our goalkeepers, I would be tempted by Pickford just because I think Man United are quite poor sometimes going forward. And then we've got Ariola and Turner. So Turner's been dropped he's no longer the forest first choice keeper but he is very cheap so he does enable you to have a bit of money elsewhere but if you've got Turner and Edison and you can afford to do a transfer you may want to get rid of Edison this week and choose a different keeper and save a bit of money as well. Regarding the defenders Trent's a very good defender but away to Man City reasonable chance of not getting any returns. Trippier's at home Newcastle do seem to be much better at home than away but they are against Chelsea, so they could be letting in goals there. White is currently flagged as injured. I've not managed to ascertain how bad his injury is and whether he's going to be playing this week or not. So we'll talk about flagged players later, if I remember. But if you want to sell White to get in a different defender, that's OK, I think. For example, Saliba. But now the difference, difference between White and Saliba is only 0.4 million. 
But when they're both fit, they both do tend to play 90 minutes, but White may not be fit. James is a new entry. He is a very good player. And although Chelsea tend not to keep clean sheets, he will occasionally keep a clean sheet, but he's got a good chance of attacking returns in any game. The big risk with James is he does seem to get injured very easily. So whenever we buy him, after a week or two, he tends to be injured and sell him again. So you could sell an injured White, get James, and he gets injured this week. However, if James doesn't get injured in the next few weeks, I expect lots of teams will be buying him and putting him in their team. I'm tempted this week, but I don't know if I'll do it or not. Pedro Paro, still a good player. Now, some of the Tottenham defence are missing through suspension or injury, but Poro is a bit attacking as well, so he's a perfectly good defender. Cash, he's sellable. Now, I know he's away to Tottenham this week, then he's got Bournemouth the following week, but he's not been getting good FPL returns recently, so he's OK to move on. I've already sold cash this week. I swapped cash for Saliba. But you don't have to be desperate to sell cash. It's okay to have him. He could get an attacking return next couple of games. I wouldn't particularly expect a clean sheet though. The Nansen for Palace away to Luton. Might get a clean sheet. A stupid man is still marked as injured. Now we were holding on to him because he was going to come back and then he had a good run of fixtures. But he came back, played 12 minutes, then went off injured again. So he is absolutely sellable. If you've got him, he's worth moving on, especially if you've got a few flags players. It's very unlikely he's going to play this week and you don't really care for him next week away at Chelsea anyway. Kanji's all right, not great, but I wouldn't be desperate to sell him if I had him. Gabriel, when he plays, he's good and he does play most of the games, but he's maybe missed three so far. Udogi's flag last time I, was, I, I looked. I wouldn't buy a doggy at the moment, but I wouldn't be desperate to sell him either. Simicass, we really don't know if he's going to be playing this week or not. If he does play the full 90 minutes, maybe he'll get an attacking return. Probably won't get a clean sheet away to Man City. The problem with Simicass is there's a reasonable chance he won't even get 60 minutes. So even if Liverpool did keep a clean sheet, he may not get the clean sheet points. So when we get to the bench order later, he's quite low on the bench order even though he had a very good score last week. Pinnock, they're playing Arsenal, probably won't get a clean sheet. Colwell, he was flagged last time I looked. Maguire, away to Everton. Everton have been a lot better recently. May get a clean sheet. Like I said, it's really hard to get clean sheets this week, predict where the clean sheets could come. And then we also have LaSalle as well. He's great. He's just bench fodder. I mean, he may keep a clean sheet this week. Home to Chelsea and then he's home to Man United. He's all right. He's not great, but he's all right because he's cheap. He frees up money. Regarding the midfielders, Salah, he's often green. I often say, yeah, it's worth getting Salah. If you've not got him, I wouldn't bother buying him this week. He's away to Man City, but he's a, obviously a very good player. Son, there are concerns that without Madison, who's now going to be out for a few weeks, Son won't be quite as good. But obviously Madison wasn't at Tottenham last year and some were still scoring points and the year before that. So I've got Son. I'll certainly be keeping him for this week. Saka, he's nicely ticking over. Rashford, still very disappointing. If I had to sell one of those four and I had Rashford, it would definitely be Rashford that would be going out. Fernandez, Odegaard's currently flagged. If you want to sell him because you've got several flag players, he's fine to sell and move on to someone else. Madison, if you've got Madison, sell him. He's out for weeks. Maybe back in January or something like that. Maybe February. So there's no point holding on to him. Even for a minus four, it's worth selling Madison and getting somebody else. Martinelli, he's a perfectly good player. Bowen's currently flagged. And again, looking online, even the latest news, there's conflicting reports about, oh, he's probably going to have surgery out for a few weeks. Oh, it's minor. He's probably going to play this week. It's like, at the moment... Don't know. So do not buy Bowen because we don't know what's happening with him. If we find out he's going to be out for a few weeks, absolutely worth selling. If he just stays flagged and we don't have confirmation one way or the other, if you want to hold on to him, that's fine. If you want to sell him, that's fine. If you have several flagged players, it's all right to sell Bowen. Bowden's all right. Sterling, Chelsea have got some nice fixtures coming up, maybe after this game week. Depends what you think of Man United away. 
So Sterling's right to hold on to if you've still got him. I probably wouldn't be bringing him in this week though. Embremo from next week, he'll probably be green. If you want to bring him in this week, for example, if you've got lots of flagged players and Bowen's one of them, you could swap Bowen for Embremo. It's a week earlier than you'd maybe want to do it, but that's okay, at least you've then got it done. Diaby, he'll be on the way out. After the next two game weeks, we may be looking to move him on. Matoma is currently flagged, currently at 50%. We don't know if he's playing or not. It's okay to move him on. If you've got a strong enough bench, it's okay to keep hold of him and see if he plays there away to Forrest. Forrest can be okay at home. Ward Prowse, he got a good return last week. He's all right. Gordon, he's all right as well. He's nice and cheap. Of the cheaper midfielders, we've got Gibbs White 5.7, Neto 5.6. Neto's currently flagged, but there's a reasonably good chance he'll be back in a couple of weeks when he's then got Burnley at home and Forrest at home. He may be playing this week, probably not. But if he does, he's away to Fulham. He may get some points. Palmer. Now, I've got Palmer as grey because he's cheap, so he's bench fodder. However, he's an excellent midfielder. And Chelsea, after this game week, have got some quite nice fixtures. So several people playing the game have got Palmer in. Loads more will be buying him. So again, if you had Bowen and you decided you want to get rid of Bowen this week, Palmer is a perfectly good person to get in. And it does free up some money. And then Nakamba is just bench fodder. For the forwards, Haaland at home to Liverpool. Liverpool, Man City, there do tend to be goals. Reasonable chance Haaland's going to be involved. But I've not made him green because it is Liverpool. Liverpool can defend a little bit at the moment. Watkins, way to Tottenham, he's OK. Looks like Wilson's going to be out for a few weeks. So if you've got Wilson, sell him, even if it's for a hit. Jesus is no longer flagged, so he may be playing against Brentford this week. Maybe part of the game, maybe the whole game, who can tell? But if you've got him and don't have lots of other flagged players, he's all right and worth keeping hold of. Darwin, so he's been away on international duty, away to Man City. He may only get half an hour, so reasonable chance of getting one point, but there's a chance of getting four or five points there. But as a general player, Darwin at the moment is a good player to have. Alvarez, home to Liverpool. May get something. Alvarez is OK. So Hoyland's he's flagged as being injured. We don't know if he's going to be playing or not. And if he is, he's going to be back next week or the week after. So if you had several flagged players and one of them's Hoyland, he would be a good one to be moving on, potentially, because there are other strikers that are OK. Solanke's... I don't know if he's the only green player this week. There certainly aren't many green players. There's only one or two green players if there are any. So they're away to Sheffield United this week. Then they've got Aston Villa, but they're at home with that. Then they're away to Palace. He's all right and he's quite cheap. So if he enables you to do other things with your squad, Solanke's worth having. But I absolutely wouldn't take a hit to get Solanke in. But he's a good player. And then Vissa, Arsenal this week, but next week Luton, so that'd be nice. Enketia, now that Jesus is back. Enketia, we don't know what minutes he's going to be getting, if any. And I can't remember if he was flagged or not. So he may have to move on soon, but he's only 5.7, so he's a bit cheap. Now we're under bench fodder. Morris, 5.3. Gel Pedro, I think he plays every week, but he never plays 90 minutes, but he's cheap, 5.3. Adebio, 4.8. Archer, 4.6. So any of these cheaper strikers they may be enabling you to get good players in your squad. So the bench order, what we do here, if we get the bench right, the four players on the bench, then the other 11 players obviously pick themselves. I'm going to make suggestions what I think you could do with your bench. If you want to do something completely different, that's absolutely fine. This is just a suggestion for those that want guidance. I'm going to show you the eight keepers now. The first keeper you see that you've got, I suggest goes on your bench, which means your other keeper is the one you're choosing. So if you have Turner, he's on your bench. If you don't have Turner, but you have Ariola, he's on your bench. Next choice would be Flecken. Then it'd be Pickford, Anana, Edison, Johnston and Pope. We're now going to look at the rest of the players. The first player you see that you've got, I suggest, goes position three on your bench. The next player position two and the third player position one. I don't show all the players here. So if I don't show a player, it's either because we've sold them, one of the two red players, or else you're going to be playing them. For example, you won't see Haaland here, you won't see Sun, you won't see Salah. 
So if you've got a stupid man, I suggest he goes on your bench. Colwell, Adebayo, Nakamba, Pinnock, Kabore, Simakas, Mitama. And the reason for some of these, like Simakas and Mitama, is their minutes risk. So even though Mitama, Mitoma, whoever you, whoever you want to call him, he's a very good player, but there's because he's coming back from injury, he may only get 20 minutes. If we knew he was playing 90 minutes, he'd be worth playing. Same with Simakas. We don't know how long he's going to get, if anything. Gio Pedro, Enketia, Neto, Lascelles, Udogi, Morris, Akanji, Anderson, Wissa. Now we get into the slightly better players for this game week. Archer, Gibbs White, Maguire, Cash, Hoyland, James, White, Sterling, Palmer. And then Diaby, Gabriel, Saliba, Odegaard, Trent, Gordon, Ward Prowse, and Bremo, Darwin. And any players you don't see here means you'll be playing them. And hopefully all of you have got at least three of these players, which means that will hopefully be your bench sorted. Regarding captaincy, again, this is just a suggestion, and it's really difficult this week because there's no outstanding captaincy choices, in my opinion. But I'm suggesting Haaland with the high ownership and a reasonable chance of being involved in a goal. He's worth having as captain. As his son at home to Aston Villa, there's a reasonable chance there's going to both sides Villa and Tottenham will be scoring there, in which case son could well be involved. And Salah. Any of those three are OK captains. I suspect Haaland is the safest because he's going to be the most highly owned. I, son is expected to maybe get the most points, but then there's a few more people own Salah than Son. So if you're after safety and you have all three of these, then Haaland's probably your best choice, then Salah, then Son. If you don't care about what other people are doing, you just want the best chance of points, then Son has the best chance of points. Any of these three should be fine captains, though. But if you want to go somewhere else, Watkins has got a chance of points, as has Saka, as has Solanke is an outside bet. But if you can, make one of the top three your captain, and then maybe one of the other top three is your vice-captain. Any of these six as vice-captain and captain is okay, though. And if you haven't got more than one of these players, just choose a player in your squad that plays for a big club, with my suggestion. So Man City, Liverpool, Tottenham, Arsenal, one of these players would be all right. And if you're wondering about the background picture, last week, so last Wednesday, our cat and another cat was having a bit of a fight and I made the mistake of trying to pick our cat up. And I got, I don't know if you can see that, but I got a quite a nasty scratch. That's a week old, that scratch. It was really deep. And it really hurt. I often get scratches and I don't feel it. So life lesson there. If you see cats fighting, don't get involved. <laughs> there we have it. Hopefully that made sense of what to do with your team. Uh, the average score, according to the system, I think might have been around the 70-ish points. It was around the game week average. However, most people doing the system that I looked at did better than average. That's because they had Salah and Haaland and they captained one of those. So that was a good amount of points. I got slightly below because I didn't have Haaland and I had Simicas on my bench. So I messed that up. I was close to getting a green arrow, but I ended up with a red arrow. I hope that made sense and I hope you have a good game week 13. Thanks for watching. Bye.